Okay, so this tutorial is on the muscles of the leg. So the leg is this region of the lower limb which lies between the knee joint and the ankle joint. So I'm going to break this tutorial into two parts. So I'm going to do the first part on the posterior compartment and then the second part will be on the muscles of the anterior and lateral compartment. So just like my tutorials on the thigh and the upper limb, the muscles of the leg can be broken down into compartments and these compartments are separated by intermuscular septa and the interosseous membrane between the tibia and the fibula. So the muscles of the posterior compartment here mainly act to plantar flex the foot, um, flex the, di the digits and invert the foot. So plantar flexion is when you um, get up on your tiptoes basically so if you so if you can see this angle between the foot and the shin it you extend this angle so you open this angle up further so you get up it's getting up on your tiptoes essentially and dorsiflexion is bringing your toes towards your head so if you imagine lying down on your back and bringing your toes up um, towards your head that's dorsiflexion and plantar plantar flexion is the opposite so the muscles of the posterior compartment, plantar flex at the ankle joint, they flex the digits and they invert the foot. The muscles of the anterior compartment here do the opposite really, so they dorsiflex the foot, so bring the toes upwards, they extend the digits and they invert the foot also. So, so as well as plantar flexion, um, ext uh, flexion of the digits and inversion, there are two muscles in the posterior compartment which actually can flex at the knee because of their attachment on the femur. And these are the, the gastrocnemius and the plantaris muscle, which I'll come on to talk about. So the lateral compartment are the muscles here which lie laterally, and these um, evert the foot. So this tutorial will be concerned with the muscles of the posterior compartment of the leg. So just briefly a quick word about innervation. Um, if I just bring in the nerves, you can see, so just looking here at the popliteal fossa, you can see the sciatic nerve and it splits into two main branches. So you've got the tibial branch of the sciatic nerve and you've got the common peroneal branch, the common fibular branch of the um, sciatic nerve. So the tibial branch of the sciatic nerve supplies the muscles of the posterior compartment and the common peroneal nerve which winds round laterally here um, innervates the anterior and lateral compartments of the uh, leg. So just a quick point about the um, common fibular nerve just while I've mentioned it. So if I just remove the muscle there, you can see the relationship of this nerve with the um, head of the fibula. So this nerve winds around the well, the neck of the fibula. Um, and this at this point, it's very vulnerable. So any impact or fractures can easily damage this nerve. And because this nerve supplies the anterior and lateral compartments, um, of the leg, it results in foot drop. So it's worth making a note of that point. So that's the common fibular nerve which winds around laterally um, around the neck of the fibula and it's quite exposed in this region. Okay, so now I'll just run you through um, the muscles of the posterior compartment and I'll talk about the origin, insertion and the actions. So I'll just get rid of the nerves and we can focus on the muscles now. Okay, so the muscles of the posterior compartment can be separated into superficial and deep muscles. And in total, you've got seven muscles. So you've got three muscles in the superficial layer and four muscles in the deep layer. So I'll just work from superficial to deep and talk you to, through these structures. So obviously, we're looking at the most superficial muscle here, and this is called the gastrocnemius muscle. So this muscle has two heads. It's got a medial head here and a lateral head. 
and this muscle inserts onto the femur on the medial and lateral condyles. So the medial head inserts onto the medial condyle and the lateral head inserts onto the lateral condyle. So I'll just show you that in a bit more detail. So I've just isolated this muscle so you can see it a bit more clearly. And you can see the origin of this muscle on the upper surfaces of the femoral condyles. So the medial, um, medial head originates on the upper surface of the medial femoral condyle and the lateral head originates on the upper surface of the um, lateral femoral condyle on a distinct facet. So you can see on this side there's a facet here which the lateral, lateral head of the gastrocnemius muscle originates on. And then if we follow the muscle down um, it's not quite shown clearly here, but it inserts onto the calcaneus via the calcaneal tendon. So I've just brought uh, the muscles back in and you can see this tendon now. So this um, is also known as the Achilles tendon. So this muscle um, has two functions. It plantar flexes the foot, so, but it, so plantar flexion is when you get up on your tiptoes. So you can see how this would act if you look at the insertion so you can see if the muscle contracts it pulls the calcaneus upwards and it would get you up on your tiptoes so that's plantar flexion and also because of its origin on the um, femoral condyles it can also flex at the knee so that's the gastrocnemius muscle and that's the most superficial muscle so next we've got this tiny little muscle here which is called the plantaris muscle. So it's got a very short muscle belly and then it's got a very long tendle, tendon which winds round down, down the medial side of the leg and joins the calcaneal tendon to insert onto the calcaneus. So this muscle um, actually lies under the medial head of the gastrocnemius muscle. So if you just, you can see the tendon emerging here and it actually lies underneath this. So we'll just take a closer look at this muscle's origin. So this muscle originates on the lower part of the supracondylar ridge. You can't see very clearly here, but it originates on the lower part of the supracondylar ridge, which comes down off the femur here. And it also originates on, it joins with the oblique popliteal ligament. And then, like I mentioned before, it winds down medially this long thin tendon and then it joins onto the calcaneal tendon with the soleus and gastrocnemius muscle. So again looking at its origin and its insertion you could um, work out that this muscle acts to plantar flex at the ankle joint and also because it originates on the femur uh, like the gastrocnemius muscle does it can also um, flex at the knee joint so the third muscle of the superficial group of the posterior muscles is this large muscle here which lies underneath the plantaris muscle and the gastrocnemius. So this muscle originates as you can see on the proximal ends of the tibia and fibula and it again joins the calcaneal tendon to insert onto the calcaneus. So this muscle doesn't originate on the femur, so it can't flex the knee. So this muscle's um, primary function is to plant a, plant a flex at the ankle joint. So these three muscles um, are innervated by the tibial nerve. So that's the branch of the sciatic nerve which innervates the posterior compartment. So next we have the muscles of the deep layer. So I'll just remove the soleus and the plantaris and we can now see the four muscles of the deep layer of the posterior compartment. So the most superior muscle is this little muscle here called the popliteus and this muscle originates on the um, posterior surface of the proximal tibia and it winds around laterally to insert onto the lateral femoral condyle and it actually um, penetrates the joint capsule of the knee um, passing between the lateral meniscus and the fibrous membrane 
to insert laterally on the lateral femoral condyle. So I'll just fade away the muscle there and you can see how the see more clearly the origin of the popliteus. Um, so you can see it lies on the posterior surface of the proximal tibia originating here and it inserts inferolaterally on the lateral femoral condyle. So this muscle um, actually serves to unlock the knee when it's locked in extension. So it does this by laterally rotating the femur. So when it contracts, so its origin here, insertion up here. So when it contracts, it brings the femur around, laterally rotating it and unlocking the knee. So in the standing position, uh, the knee is fully extended and um, it's locked like this. So the popliteus functions to laterally rotate the femur on the tibia and unlock the knee joint. So again, this muscle is innervated by the um, tibial branch of the sciatic nerve. So next, we've got these three large muscles. So laterally here, we've got the flexor hallucis longus. Medially, we've got the flexor digitorum longus. And lying between these two muscles, we've got the tibialis posterior muscle. So starting with the most lateral muscle, the flexor hallucis longus, you can see this originates on the posterior surface of the lower fibula and also it originates on the adjacent interosseous membrane which you can't quite visualize here um, and it inserts on the base of the proximal phalanx so the base of the big toe oh, sorry the distal phalanx base of the um, the distal phalanx of the great toe so we'll just follow this muscle down and you can see the tendon um, passing through a groove on the talus which is this bone here and then it passes under this shelf of bone so this is um, this little shelf of bone is on the calcaneus and it's called the sustentaculum talus so you can see that flexor hallucis longus tendon passes underneath this shelf and it runs down to the base of the distal phalanx of the great toe so next we've got this muscle here which is called the flexor digitorum longus and this muscle as you can see sits on the posterior surface of the medial tibia so the tibia bone here um, and this muscle um, as you can tell by the name flexes the digits so it inserts onto the bases of the lateral four distal phalanges and on the plantar surface so I'll try and show you that so I've just rotated the model so we can look at the plantar surface of the foot and I'm just going to remove the other muscles and tendons so you can see the um, this this muscle here is the flexor hallucis longus and you can see the tendon winding around and it inserts onto the base of the distal phalanx of the great toe and you've got the flexor digitorum longus muscle which I just um, showed you so it winds around um, behind a shallow groove in the medial mal malleolus and then it passes um, inferiorly to the flexor hallucis longus tendon and it inserts onto the bases of the lateral four distal phalanges so what this muscle does is it um, obviously flexes the digits so just taking another look at um, these tendons as they pass behind the distal tibia and the tarsal bones so you've got the flexor hallucis longus passing behind a groove in the talus bone and then underneath this shelf of bone the sustentaculum talus on the calcaneus and you've got the flexor digitorum longus which passes behind a shallow groove in the medial malleolus so the medial malleolus is this um, part of the tibia, distal part of the tibia um, and then it runs down onto the plantar surface of the foot passing inferiorly to the 
tendon of the flexor hallucis longus. So the last muscle is this muscle which sits between them. So this is the tibialis posterior muscle. So this muscle, as you can see here, originates between the tibia and fibula on the interosseous membrane and also on the adjacent um, surfaces of the tibia and fibula. And this muscle runs down, passing underneath the tendon of the um, flexor hallucis, sorry, flexor digitorum longus. And you can see its insertion point. Um, just try and get a good look. So it inserts on the um, tuberosity of the navicular and also on the medial cuneiform bone. So if I just show you the navicular, um, this is this tarsal bone. Um, so the tibialis posterior inserts onto the tuberosity of the navicular um, and also the cuneiform bone. So what this muscle does is that it plantar flexes um, the ankle joint and it also inverts the foot and it also supports the medial arch of the foot. So a few functions there. And again all these muscles are innervated by the uh, tibial branch of the sciatic nerve. So those are the muscles of the posterior compartment of the leg. I hope that's cleared things up a little bit. In أعجبك الفيديو لا تنسى الاشتراك بالقناة والإعجاب والتعليق على الفيديو وأيضا لا تنسى المشاركة جميع الحقوق محفوظة لقناة Arab Doctors Tube.